Doesn't this remind you of the gladiatorial combats in ancient Rome? Maybe it would if I knew what you were talking about. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and ooh, let's get a couple of things out of the way first. I missed the last weekly, but I had a good reason. I was off at PowerCon, and that's always super, super fun fun. But that also means I missed a round of chorn around the house. So after catching up on all the lawn mowing, my allergies are a little bit out of whack. So if I'm sniffling, of course it's not going to do it now. Been sniffling all morning, but... If that starts acting up during this episode, it's partly because of allergies and partly because I just missed being here in front of the camera with y'all. But I also had some dust or debris or something fling out of the lawnmower and hit me right in the left eye. And it was terrible the rest of that day. Just itchy, scratchy, puffed up, red. I didn't know what was going on. Is there something in there? I gotta get it out. But I have been better about rubbing it the past couple of days, and it seems to be going down. But it's all I can think about. You know how it is? It's right there. Just, I wanna, but I can't. <laughs> so again, if I start winking and blinking at you, it's partly because of that, and partly because I miss the hell out of y'all. Okay, don't stop. Okay. But I'm figuring, like it's done in the past, a good dose of nostalgia and fun talking about toys make all this go away. I'll come out the other side of the weekly just... <laughs> the power of plastic compels you! But that's enough about my own personal trials and tribulations. Like I said, PowerCon was last weekend, so we're gonna quickly go over some of the things that caught my eye and my camera. See, I can't stop thinking about my eye. Like Fresh Monkey Fiction. They have a new series coming called Voyagers and, ooh, Space Cowboy. That's the way to my heart right there. Something cowboy, something space. It's two great tastes that go great together. Copyright trademark Robo 2023. <laughs> what? So, did somebody already take that? There's also a TV headed character that has a very interesting design, and then some translucent figures that may be recognizable to some of you. Not to me, apparently, though. I, it seems like the deeper companies dig, the more I realize that I, I missed some things back in the day. But that's okay, because I didn't miss a lot of other things. That's just how we all grew up. You can't see everything, but. We can now go back and see everything. That's one of the good things of the internet. Of course, there's some things that you shouldn't go back and see. Whatever. Uh, toys. Eh. Then over in Monster Force territory, which we've talked about several times on the weekly, there is this big bastard. You can recognize the Memory Toys War Bear body, but <laughs> after taking a quick look at it last week or week before, whenever I opened that up, it's almost like that body was made more for the Sasquatch parts than it was for the bear parts. And I don't know if this part of the story has been revealed yet. I don't know if this is a good guy or a bad guy. Because here, he could very well be a bad guy with that angry face and a big old gun just mowing. But then there's this head with almost a gentle demeanor. So who knows where this is going to go. I just like that there's options. And I really like this design. Then after I got home from PowerCon, I noticed that Big Bad Toy Store posted a couple of new Monster Force pre-orders, like Sleepwalker. This is the Forgotten King's Aerial Assault Trooper. Basically, an evil jetpack trooper against their will. If you go and read the story, it's very interesting how they're setting all this up. Because there's also an alternate Kilowarg head, so you can have some werewolf trooper action too. Then there is the Donner Party. And what did I just say about cowboys? You put that into the mix and you have my attention. There's no outer space involved, but it's a healthy dose of Frankenstein, some horror, some monsters. That is also irresistible to me. When I first saw it, I went reading through the bio to find the actual name only to realize the Donner Party is its actual name. He's the leftover dead and eaten, sewn all together, brought to life, who now protects the Donner ancestors. <sighs> okay, I'm in. It's crazy, but it plays right into the storyline. Seriously, I've linked Big Bad Toy Store in the description if you're interested in it, it because it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. The more characters they add, the further the story moves along. 
that's just awesome. The same could be said for Spiro Toys Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. I was watching their podcast last night and they mentioned having their comic book published instead of doing it themselves. That just means forward progress. That also means more time for more figures. And that's always a good thing. They had a hell of a setup at PowerCon. This Awok Village playset. Ooh, mwah. every time I walk past that thing, it's like, hey, can I buy one of those? That is cool too. But they also debuted four new figures like King Hannibal. Even if he didn't have King in his name, you would still think King of the jungle, of the forest, of everything the light touches, King. Then there's a reptile body looking all lizardy, and they did mention that the jaw will open and close, but it didn't on this because it's a prototype being shown at a show. Still, a foosh blue lizard? Hmm. Final Battle Pale looking much more slicked back. He's going in. It's all on the line. You don't want that mohawk sticking up where I, actually in a fight somebody grabbed that thing. You want it more subdued, more stealthy, more agile. But my eyes were drawn to Kali Prime, which I don't know if that's the official name. Again, that's what they were calling it on the podcast last night. It's the same body as King Hannibal, but those colors and that mean mug and head. Oh man, this is beautiful. My point is this line kicks a lot of ass and there's a lot more ass kicking on the way. Plain and simple. I stumbled upon the Neo Gen booth completely by accident, but I'm glad I did because they had the Fury Toys Abyss Force on display. Anthropomorphic sharks? Hell, that's just cool. Granted, I've seen images and turnarounds of these, but seeing them in person? So much better. And now I'm showing them to you in image form and not in person. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. <laughs> <laughs> they look fantastic. At first glance, you would think that there's a lot of reuse involved between the three sharks, but then getting up close, <laughs> there's same basic shapes, but there are differences like scars and the angles of fins and everything. I, maybe shoulders, but at that point, you might as well make everything new, right? They're very individual, but look like part of a group. You know, like teams tend to do. Made all by the same sculptor and company. I don't know where I'm going with this. Tiger Shark Billy dual wielding the Tommy guns and sporting some dynamite. He seems to be the loose cannon of the crew. Of course, it does say Crazy Boy right there on the pictures, so that may be skewing my perceptions a bit. <laughs> oh, he's a crazy boy. I don't know why I think that. Just looking at the figure. Hammerhead Gypsy seems like the brawler, the brute, for going guns and just using brass knuckles and even an anchor. And then White Shark Arthur may be the mastermind. A bit more refined. Seriously, look, he's pinky out on his glass. Just, yes, we shall do some killing today, boys. But then he isn't afraid to let loose and get his hands dirty either. Or whatever, they're toys that juice up the old imagination. If I can look at something and a story or a background or an attitude just pow, pops me right in the side of the brain pan, somebody did their job. Those three are currently on pre-order at 5K Toys, but at the show, there were also a couple of figures out beside them. I'm presuming Wave 2? The Swordfish takes things in another direction with the armor bits and blade weapons. Maybe different underwater factions have different ways of waging war or living or something? Because Lanternfish is a bit of that same warrior type with the helmet and the plates and the ball and chain. Not to mention the color palettes. The sharks are very colorful, very detailed, but then these are monochromatic, just using the color to almost give it a wash so it's easier to see the overall sculpt. Is that done just to show off the prototype before it gets into paint, or is this final product? I don't know. I guess we'll find out soon? Either way, I'm interested. We'll see what happens. Boss Fight Studio rolled out their 112th scale Court of the Dead, and yeah, this is the way you snag Robo. I only know Court of the Dead from Sideshow's one-sixth offerings, but those are too big. Those are out of my wheelhouse, so I didn't really pay a lot of attention to them. You shrink them down to half the size? No. Oh, oh, look at that. It brings them into focus for me. It's what I collect, and that's what the weekly's about. What I'm interested in and what I collect. 
Just look at all the fine details here, and it's boss fight, so you know it has some range of movement to them. I also like that the first two shown are opposite ends of the spectrum. You have your warrior woman with all the exposed body parts, so she's more agile, more fighter type, but then the other is all just covered in cloth and armor. You know, this guy teleports or something because he's not going to exert any physical energy. You know what I mean? That's just what I can glean off the visuals here. But that's also the sign of a good toy, right? They also showed off some six inch blanks and if you're a customizer, ooh, these are right up your alley. I don't know what else I could say here though. These are exactly what they say they are. Blank canvases to make whatever you want. The only thing I can say is I hope we see more body types and sizes down the road. Bigger, bulkier, shorter, skinnier, monster types, civilian types, whatever you want to give me. Then there was Savage Crucible and their setup at the show was insane. They had a tower with the Savage Crucible logo rotating around. They had the logo projected onto the walls on at least two sides of the convention center, the sides I hung out the most. If you walked out without seeing the Savage Crucible booth, you didn't see much. <laughs> you didn't travel to a whole section of the show. In that booth, they had quite a few figures on display, a lot of which we've seen before, I think. Remember, it's me. I can't remember what I did yesterday. So all these figure designs just, ah, what's that? He, ah, it's always new to me. Ah, look at that. Ah, like the fish type person. It was neat seeing a translucency to the skin. It's a recognizable design, but it's also newish. It's a spin on what you imagine when you see fish type person. Flip side, I don't remember seeing this design at all, but again, it's new to me. Therefore, it's pretty neat looking. I seen it. Now I want it, and that is PowerCon in a nutshell. Just a wallet-destroying toy show. But seeing the Wave 2 for Zeta Barbarian in person took the cake for me. And I don't mean that to diminish any of the other figures on display. Everything was amazing looking, but seeing this guy's eyes peering out from under the helmet, just bloodlusty, just focused, oh, it was almost mesmerizing. Like you're staring each other down and you're gonna lose. He's gonna win. That's all there is to it. Again, great showing all the way around, but this was my favorite. But out of all the booths that I saw over the weekend, and I did miss a lot because I was constantly talking. Yeah, I know, imagine that. It was Ramen Toys booth that was the most eclectic. I mean, it's basically a little bit of something for everyone, but mostly if you are a child of the 80s, and guess what? I fall directly into that demographic. Now, if you remember way back, I was very critical of Ramen Toys taking Facebook payments only when they began. And Ace and I hashed that out. It was like, now he's on a shopping platform. The payments are more secure. So that is one big negative I had out of the way. But then there's the licensing situation, which is very, I'm making these toys. Hey, license holders come and get some. Which is very backwards from what is usually done, but at the same time, very ballsy and has worked in a couple of cases. So it's kind of crazy. I mean, there was a cease and desist for the goal wing, but the guidelines were very specific. So those changes were made for the upcoming re-release. On top of showing the Machina or Makina or whatever the other car is called. Yeah, it's a loophole, but it's almost like a purposely made loophole. Or lawyers saying that the Tom Cruise head cannot be sold. Well, that just means that it can be offered as a free gift if you order the three pack of pilots. So again, loophole. On top of the fact that if you take the Maverick head, put it on this body, you can take this head and put it on a certain G.I. Joe figure that, whose head wasn't up to snuff recently. And then this He-Man and Skeletor is essentially Ace telling Mattel to give him a call that he would like to talk about licensing realistically proportioned and styled Masters of the Universe figures. If they want to, hey, great, here we go. If not, 
<laughs> I guess we'll see what happens. And yes, that's supposed to be a young Triple H head. That's who he fan casted to be He-Man in a live action movie, so why not put it on the figure? But if you don't care for that, if this ever sees release, there's also the other two heads, which are fantastic looking He-Man heads. And then there's the Marshall and 3 Zero, which I wasn't into that property when I was a kid. Like I was saying earlier, you can't be into everything. But I will say these are very, very nice looking. And that they may get me with a Tex Hex. Or not a Tex Hex. Not Tex Hex. You know, I can't even think of a name offhand. It'd just be Bone Cowboy. Zo zombie Cowboy. Uh, evil... Uh, Again with the Cowboys, huh? As for things outside of PowerCon, McFarlane Toys solicited more DC Multiverse Batmans. Hey, hey, come back, come back, come back! I'm just gonna touch on them real quick. We'll get back to other stuff here in a second. Because these are exclusives, and what do we always say? The best exclusives are the ones that appeal to a smaller percentage of collectors. Seriously, would you rather have brand new, unique characters as exclusives that sell out in 30 minutes and never come back? Or... Would you rather have something glow in the dark for Amazon? Or perhaps sketch variant for Entertainment Earth? Think about it. Because there were some new reveals, like... <laughs> okay, another Batman, but it's an all-new sculpt in a knight's type armor. I'll give you one guess as to what this is called. Go ahead. Yep, it's the Dark Knights of Steel Batman. DC vs. Vampire's Green Lantern is also right there on the nose, mixing existing parts with a few unique pieces to sell the mashup. But I think a lot of eyes are on Black Lightning. It is Final Crisis and not classic, but it's one of those costumes that pay homage to the golden oldies. And in that aspect, yeah, I like this. Notice it says gold label though, so maybe we'll see another version of this down the road. Who knows? Back at San Diego Comic-Con, the Hasbro team snuck a Marvel Legends shield agent and Hydra Trooper into the display at random times, saying, we'll find out more in the future. That's it. And this week, it's the future. Well, that doesn't make sense. Th this past week, the future finally came and went, because that's how time works. You say something's going to happen, it happens, it immediately happened in the past. I mean, that's... that's it. Wear it now, now. Go back to then. When? Now. Now? Now. I can't. Why? We missed it. When? Just now. What I'm trying to say is that the Marvel Legends Hydra Trooper and Shield Agent 2-pack is now available for pre-order on Hasbro Pulse. That's it. Two female bodies with alternate unmasked heads that you can use wherever you want. If you want it, <laughs> that link is in the description. And then finally, let's finish off this weekly with the, <laughs> the Yolo Park AMK Pro Series Transformers G1 Megatron model kit. So much going on here, but works oh so well. First, this apparently debuted back in April in a Kickstarter, but I didn't see it back then. Like a couple of things on this episode, it's new to me. Therefore, I'm going to talk about it. Weekly! Two, it's not a model kit in the sense that it is a bunch of tiny parts in a sprue all molded in the same color that takes a couple of hours to put together. Then you still have to do decals and paint and everything else. This is fully painted and split into a handful of pieces. Here's a screenshot of Prime vs. Prime's review and you can see it's just plug the torso parts together assemble the arms, the feet bones connected to the shin bone, shove it together and biggity bam you're done. I am unfamiliar with Yolo Park in general so I don't know if this is done, if this is called, if this is produced as a model kit for a specific reason. Maybe it falls under a different shipping or tax classification than action figures or toys? I don't know. It's just a very very simple model kit to put together. Third, this is a non-transforming transformer. So if that is a bridge too far, if that is just absolutely appalling to your tender sensibilities, then hey, no harm done, right? This is the last item I'm talking about. You can leave now. You can go about your day, your weekend, your week, and then we'll swing back around next week talking about more toys. It's maybe something that you do like. It's that easy. Still here? Cool. Because fourth, 
This is just one kick-ass looking Megatron. I'm a G1 junkie, so this is for me. It sends the nostalgia shivers right up my spine. I will say the head is just ever so slightly off-putting. I don't know if it's the shape or the size. I think it's because it's narrow. It, it, it could use a little bit more width and maybe it's some more shading to the brow, but otherwise, Oh, this is straight out of my childhood. Definitely not a deal breaker. Plus, it's cool to see a company do the big bad first instead of the obligatory Bumblebee and or Optimus Prime. I did do a little research and found that Yellow Park has done the two Autobots in movie lines, but Megatron is the first AMK Pro Series G1 figure. That does present a problem though, because this is eight inches tall, or nearly eight inches tall. I'm not a Transformers connoisseur. I skipped on a lot of figures, a lot of lines in the past. For me, that does not fit with anything else in my display. If I got this, I'd live in fear of them never releasing more figures. Optimus seems likely, but how far beyond that will they go? I am completely down for a G1 accurate Soundwave and Starscream, which leads to Ironhide and Prowl, and then it's just the snowball rolling down the hill wish list of Transformers. It's just, if I have these, I need this one, and this one goes with this, and then bring it in here. And then, I'm, oh, uh, uh. Flip side, it is $50, which seems like a hell of a deal for what you get here. Again, eight inch figure, there's a little die cast included, swappable faces and chest plate, key to vector sigma, blaster, energy sword and mace, and light up features in the eyes and arm cannon. That is pretty sweet. I'm so torn, I want it. I really, really do. But do I need it? I mean, really, really need it. I really, really do. And hey, that's all for this week. Look at that. I didn't think about my eye once, unless I said the word eye, and then it was kinda, but then back to the toys. <laughs> I swear. Every time I feel bad, I get in front of the camera. <laughs> but I also wanted to talk about PowerCon because <sighs> amazing. What a whirlwind of gawking and good times. Got to catch up with some old friends, make some new friends, all while just getting hands upon all kinds of independent company product. Seriously, there are so many people out there doing it for themselves while still being a part of a community. It, there's so much sharing going on between, oh, hey, you want to make toys? Me too. Let's figure out how to do this. Oh, you too? Come on, everybody. It's a big party. Let's make action figures. We're all in it together. Just making toys. PowerCon is just overwhelming passion for the plastic. In fact, that should be their tagline. I'm giving it to you for free. Just take it if you want it. Seriously, it is the show to go to if you love action figures because it's just 24 seven for three days of the whole weekend. Mm -mm -mm. I already miss it. But that's what next year's for, right? That's what toys are for. Keep shining. Keep painting, keep playing all the days. Yeah, I forgot the words, but I'm gonna keep singing because I'm moving away from the camera right now. That's what toys are for.